Today, I'm going to be showing you how to do the water pump replacement on a 2012 Ford F-150 3.7 V6. Um, I haven't done it on this one. should be a little simple process. I got everything from the dealership. Um, here's the actual water pump itself. I believe that's the part number right there. So you can see that. Um, so yeah, so this comes as a complete kit i don't they gave me two gaskets and an o-ring on there um then it comes with a hose now this is a a check valve hose so i'm going to show you right now how you have to check this this is a one way one goes to the engine obviously eng for engine and then the other ones for the other part um and then it comes with a new pulley and then um that's pretty much it so um if you haven't already give it a thumbs up comment down below if you have any questions and hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future and we're going to go ahead and start this video right after the intro So I'm going to take off this guy. Um, I mean, you don't need to take it off, but I would recommend to take it off just for easier working around to like get your hands all freed up. Um, so we got three tabs. So we got one, two, three right there. Then right here we have a little red tab. You got to pull and then you're going to press right here. Push in, pull out while pressing on the black tab right here. So you press right here on this little tab and then that should be able to make it free. Um, then we got to take off this hose right here. Now this can be on there pretty tight. I broke, I just did the spark plugs on this yesterday. So these are coming off pretty easy. Um, I used the flathead. I just put the flathead in between there and then I walk the flathead just like spreading apart, just walking it back and forth. Right here, um, there's a little tab, just like this one. You push down on this tab, and then you just pull right out just like that. Um, so we're gonna do the same thing for this one right here. So push down, and then just wiggle right up on out. Don't wiggle too hard. And then we're gonna go, you can use a flathead or an eight millimeter socket just to take that off. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and bring it towards the air filter box and lift up and then lift up a little bit more higher and then wiggle it right up on out. By just taking that off, we have a huge amount of access to the water pump. Um, yeah, so we gotta take off the thermostat. Obviously this one doesn't have the check valve. Yeah, this one doesn't have the check valve, so we have to replace that hose. Um, but I think, or you know what? No, never mind. This is the little check valve right here, I think. Um, I think that's what it was. It shows it right here. Yeah. I think those are the only two. But man, this one's like a little tedious one to get to. Um,. Gosh, we might have to take off this whole assembly. Uh, we'll probably take off those couple 13 millimeters right there. Um, we have to do this. This is just their new fix of the TSB. But I mean, note to the thermostat housing. You know what I think this is for? No, we're not gonna replace this. Um, we're not gonna replace that hose. We are going to have to take off this whole thermostat housing. I'm going to replace in this heater hose um, just because it's already seeping out. And then right here too on these little fit-ins, um, they're seeping out right there. Um, pretty much going to need an 8, 10, and pretty much that's it. Something to catch the, the coolant, obviously. Um, but yeah. All right, so at the water pump, we have four 10-millimeter bolts that's holding the actual pulley onto the actual water pump itself and we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just loosen those up right now while the belt's still on so I'm just gonna loosen them up with this 
I'm not gonna fully take them out. So now that we got that loosened up, um, we are going to go ahead and take off a few things like our thermostat. Um, we're just going to take off the housing. So we got one bolt right here. We have another bolt, I think like right over there. Well, before we even take off that, let me just take off the belt so I make sure. This is, again, this is my first time seeing this. All right, so what we're going to go ahead and do, we are going to have to take off this. So we got one right there. That's one eight millimeter. Um, there's another one. So that's two. Is there a third one over here? Um, there's the third one right there so we're gonna go ahead and take off that and then there's the fourth one and I think that's pretty much it so it's only gonna be those four bolts I'm gonna spray some WD-40 in here just so we can break that seal off um, so I'm gonna spray it right now I'm not gonna show that part and the reason why I, I, I put that there is just so we can uh, slide this guy right out because it's going to be stuck in there i know that for sure um so let's go ahead and take off those bolts so the top one right here and then the bottom one all the way back over there those are the same links i'm just trying to make sure we're detailed as possible so it's the same length we got one more. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and take off um, our hoses. So I'm just gonna take off one hose clamp. All right, so to take off this hose, I'm just gonna grab it and I'm just gonna rock it back and forth until it breaks free. And then we're gonna pull out this hose and then coolant should start flying right out. And then same thing, I'm gonna do it for this hose too. So this hose clamp broke on me. So I'm gonna spray some um, like WD-40 on the hose, and then once we get this going, this should be able to slide. I'm gonna have to cut this hose clamp. I'll deal with that later. Um, God, these hose clamps sucks. I'm just gonna end up putting new hose clamps on these. I'm also replacing these hoses too. So again, you wanna rock this back and forth until it breaks free. Once it breaks free. All right, so next thing, we're gonna go ahead and take off this clamp. Let me just spray some penetrating oil on it right now so we can just get it to slide i'm just gonna move this one out the way you don't have to take this one off unless you're replacing it which i would recommend to replace it if i was you and only the dealership has this hose by the way nobody else is gonna have this hose as of right now Okay, we're just gonna break our hose free. 
All right, so now at this point, we are ready to take off our housing, I think. Should be ready to take off. Um, double check, so we got that one. That one. Oh, no, still got one more bolt. All right, so now we should be ready to take out the thermostat housing. All right, so this should just pop right out. And then remember, we spayed the WD-40 over there, and that's why I should make it really easy for it to come out. All right, so now we have better access to our water pump. Here is our tensioner right here. Zoom in on that. So right here, that looks like a 15 millimeter. Let me get back to the video. All right. So looks like we're gonna have to turn this clockwise. All right, so it looks like we're gonna have to turn this counterclockwise. So as you do that, you'll release all the tension on the actual pulley itself. And then I'm gonna take off the four 10 millimeter bolts on the water pump. All right, so if I was you, I would get your water pump ready and I'll have this guy hanging around. So we're gonna have this guy sitting right here, right next to us and I'm as, as I take a bolt off, I'm gonna put the bolt back where it should go. So I'm gonna transfer all the bolts onto, the, onto here just so we don't mix up anything and so forth. All right, so now let's check out to see how many bolts we need to take off. So we have, these are gonna be eight millimeters. As you can see right here, this is where I was leaking out from. You see all that little crust buildup. Um, no wobble, well it has a little small wobble play. I mean like a couple thousands of an inch. All right, so we have one, two, three, four. Four. Uh, five, six, and seven so let me double check so we got one two three four five six seven so yeah so we're gonna go ahead and take off all those bolts now remember you're gonna transfer each bolt that you take off over to the next water pump and then so forth so we just need to make sure we get all these bolts correct and I'm really sorry about the bad camera angle I'm trying my best guys All right, so they are all the same size. So I'm not gonna go ahead and assort them. We'll just leave them on the side. So the reason why I like um, putting them in the right spot because there might be some that are longer than others, but these ones are all the same size. So you're gonna grab a flathead screwdriver. And we're just gonna kind of pry right here. There's a little pry bar, a little pry spot right here. As we take off this, I believe there's a second water pump in this truck. Um, that's what I was stated and told. So, I don't know what kind of fun design that is, but who has two water pumps in an engine? But, I mean, I guess. So, I'm gonna get a wire brush. And then I'm just going to clean up this area. And then we just want to make sure we clean up whatever little residue that we have. Just clean up mostly all of this stuff. 
and then we'll go with the rag and then wipe it down. Now I'm going to spray brake cleaner on the rag. So we'll spray some brake cleaner on there and then you just go right over it. Just like that. So we got our area cleaned up. Um, I came across a little issue. It's late at night and I have to get this car finished today and I don't have that O-ring. Um, this is a must need to finish today. Like there's no out of way out of this. So I'm going to have to make sure you guys get that O-ring. Um, the kit doesn't come with O-ring. Um, it does come with the o-ring for this piece right here but obviously the inner one doesn't it's not coming with it clean up that <clears throat> make sure you get a wire brush and clean up all this there might be um crust if there is crust it's not going to seal um and if it does it'll start corroding and eating out your metal just like that obviously all the corrosion is going away so um i'm um i'm sorry the the protector i can't even think right now i got like the majorest migraine right now it's just been a hardcore long day too many stressful jobs um so right here we have our obviously our other piece our o-ring on our water pump is going to go on there we are going to lubricate that with dielectric grease just so that can seat on there pretty well um so we'll just go ahead and coat this or matter of fact we'll just coat that piece itself with dielectric grease um here's some grease right here itself so you can use any kind of grease i'm going to use some dielectric grease um we'll kind of squeeze out too much but still so again we're going to go ahead and go right here get that zoomed in and literally just on the outside of this gonna just coat that with the grease and then same thing too if you want just to be on the safe side we're gonna go ahead and just coat this now what this is doing or by doing this um, this is preventing the o-ring from rolling back and pinning pinching itself and making your life a miserable nightmare you know we don't want that um, if you see corrosion all over your block, I would recommend you to put silicone coating on the actual um, timing cover itself, just so you don't have no imperfections. That's if you have imperfections. This is no imperfections, so it's smooth, we're good. All right, so let's go ahead and put in our water pump. Make sure that the bottom goes in pretty nice um, and smooth. Now you're not forcing it in there, you're just gonna wiggle it right up in there. So if you can spin it in there, then we're golden. All right, so we got it up in there. Again, you don't wanna force it in there, you wanna just let it slide in. If you force it in there, you have a really good chance of destroying that O-ring. So now we're going to go ahead and put in our screws. They're all the same. So you can't mess it up. So all these bolts they are going to need to be tightened down to seven foot pounds. They didn't say a specific way to tighten this down. And then you got to do an additional quarter inch turn. So here's my torque wrench snap on. No, obviously I'll go ahead and show you um, once I turn it quarter turn it'll show me how much it torqued it down to so you can use that as a reference but I'll show you how to do the quarter inch turn without the special tool 
Um, since I have it, might as well just use it. But you are going to need to torque it down to 7 foot-pounds. Um, or, I mean, you can just do it by a feel. I'm just doing it for you guys. All right, so let's go ahead and explain this 45 degree angle thing. Um, so right here, starting up on top, I love to start, is we'll go ahead and make this our zero. And then um, doing half a churn, or doing 100 and uh, going to one complete churn with this whole bolt turns it into 360 degrees. Now let's say if we go half a churn, that's 180, and then the eight, 180 will be on the bottom. So our half of the 180 will be our 90 degree, which would be right here on our side. And then half of that um, 90 would be 45. So it would just be just like a hairline. So if you mark these, and then you're just going to go a hairline over. So that brings it up to 17... I would just torque it down to seven foot, 17 foot-pounds. Man, that's a lot. That scares me. So I would do it at yeah, 16, but yeah. That's... So we pretty much are ideal. Let me just. All right, so I did do that one. At least my thing shows me if I did it or not. So um, we are good on that. Um, so about 16 foot pounds, I would torque those down to. Um, it's actually averaging out 17, but just to be on the safe side, just torque those down to about seven, 17 foot pounds. I mean, to me, that's a lot, but I mean, it is what it is. That's what the thing is calling for. And then um, pretty much, I think for the other little eight millimeter bolts, those are gonna be the same torque specs too. All right, again, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna put a little silicone right around there. Um, so, I'm gonna just dab it with my finger and then just put a coat of silicone around this. I know some of you guys are gonna give me crap on this, but I mean, it'll work out the same. All right, so I went as a little reinsurance and I put a little silicone right there, um, just a coat on the wall. And then we're gonna go ahead and, and I already replaced my O-ring right here. So, that should slide right in. You shouldn't have any hard times with that going in there. So we're gonna go ahead and put in our four bolts. So same thing, 17 foot pounds, that'll be pretty ideal. We are done with this one. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put in our pulley. Um, so with our new water pump, it's a three hole, so you have to switch it out. You can't use the four hole pulley. So obviously we're gonna be missing one bolt. So just so you're aware, this is the updated water pump. And usually I would like to fish for these guys as I'll tighten them down just so we can see what's going on. Now I don't know the torque spec for this, but all right, cool. So we got 
that on. Now we're going to put in our belt. Our belt shouldn't be that hard to put on. Um, if you forgot how it goes, I'll go ahead and show that right now. I'm going to put the belt tension. We should have actually done this one first, but that's all right. As I release the tension, I'll go ahead and show the belt diagram right now. All right, so as you can see, the the crank pulley we have it right here. We're gonna go under the belt tensioner, over the water pump right over the wa um, the alternator and then right back at the crank pulley so that's pretty much it simple process uh, nothing fancy nothing too crazy um oh snaps all right so we're gonna go ahead and put in our lower radiator hose i'm gonna reuse this clamp because this is the one that didn't leak the other ones did so i'm gonna replace these clamps um and so forth so let me go ahead and grab those clamps all right so now we are going to put on our um upper radiator hose so make sure that sits right over there i already got the hose clamp on it and then if you're going to use one of these aftermarket ones those are an eight millimeter by the way right. so we got that on we're going to put this one this one this is a new hose. This one actually comes with a new hose clamp. Um, all you gotta do is get a flat head and just spread that apart. Um, all right, so there we have it. And then when you put in this guy right here into our coolant reservoir, you can put back in the clip and then um, Make sure you actually put grease um, on the other one. Make sure it's cleaned up too. And then we're just gonna put some grease on it. Just gonna put it all around. And then this will just slide and clip in. All right, so once that's clipped in, we're good. Oh, I should have just clamped that one when I had the chance. Did it you pay attention? All right. Now, if you're having a hard time bringing it up, you can spray some WD-40 on there. All right, so got that in, got that on, got that on, got that on, sounding like a song. Dun -dun -dun, dun -dun -dun. Now I'm going to take off this other clamp. I just don't feel comfortable with it. So um, this is the one I'm going to be taking off. Again, I just don't feel comfortable with it. Just going to be putting in a new clamp. All right, so we're all hooked up. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and hook up our intake. So you're gonna have to put it at a little angle up here, and then you're just gonna go nose diving in first, just kind of wiggle it in until you get it in there. Then go ahead and put on your latches. There's three latches, don't forget. Put on your mass airflow sensor connector, push it in, pull it out. If it comes out, make sure you hear it clip. So try pulling on these back and then push in your red clip. Then we're going to push this guy in there, tighten it down. And then we're going to go ahead and get our PCV hose. 
connect that until you hear it clip and then put in our um, vacuum hose or our ventilation hose, whatever you guys want to call it. It's not even a vacuum hose. Um, all right, so at this point, you're gonna go ahead and add your coolant. I'll go ahead and do that. I'm not gonna show that part. And then we'll get right back to the video. Just keep adding until you fill it up. All right, so just so you guys can see, I use the, it's called a vacuum fill tool. You can actually get that at Harbor Freight. Um, but you're gonna need an air compressor to do that. So it sucks out all the air from the system and then you fill it up with coolant. I got our cell filled up. Um, now that takes out almost like 98% of the air in the system or up to like maybe 95, 98. Um, so then you're gonna go inside the vehicle. I don't know if there's a bleeding procedure for this. I'm pretty sure there might be. Um, have the heater on full blast pay attention to the temperature um, so let's go ahead and just keep clicking OK I'm gonna go ahead and take off my flash and then I'm just gonna go to gauge mode and then let's just see I think that's all it shows um, well, let me see settings vehicle um, no it doesn't even show it um, just pay attention to your temperature gauge um, as it's getting hot you should feel hot air if you're not feeling any hot air then you need to go ahead and turn it off let it cool down if not you might need to accelerate it hold it at you know, maybe like 2000 RPM for a couple seconds, fluctuate it. I can already feel it getting nice and warm. Um, so yeah, if you fluctuate it like that and you, and then you start feeling the, the, the heater start getting, actually getting hot as the car's warming up, it's like, as that temperature's gauge is going up, this air should start getting hot. If it's staying cold, then obviously you got air in the system and you need to bleed it out more. Check your reservoir. I still have the radiator cap off. Keep an eye on everything. Um, this is your most crucial part so far. So I'm still, right here is the cold fill level. I'm perfect, I'm ideal. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on. And that's pretty much it. Um, if this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions. And hit that subscribe button for more coming videos in the future. And thanks for watching.